Good evening. I want to welcome you tonight to this public meeting. My name is Troy Rice. I'm the interim planning director here for the city. And we have other members of our planning staff that are here tonight. And I know some of you may uh, visit with them by email or phone, but I want you to see who they are this evening. This is Beth Skeeto. There's Lauren Hoffman, Tara Jackson, and Ryan Robeson. Um, the project that is being presented tonight is a planned unit development, or what we typically refer to as a PUD. It's going to be located on lots currently at 1152 Hunter Street and 1813 and 1811 Park Rider Street. This project lies within Old Conway Overlay District and the Hendrix Edition. And this public meeting is required per the city's zoning uh, code as part of the application process uh, for the creation of a, new, of a new PUD. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to allow the applicant an opportunity to present to you a conceptual plan of a proposed development in order for them to gain feedback from you, from all the surrounding property owners, neighborhood residents, and in fact, the zoning code states it like this. The applicant shall use relevant comments gathered at the public meeting to amend the PUD proposal in a manner that is both feasible for the applicant and most satisfactory to the interested parties. So tonight is your opportunity to see and hear what is being proposed, to ask some general questions and to provide some constructive feedback to the applicant with the understanding that what's being presented to you tonight is still in the pre-development stage. Your overall support or opposition to the project is certainly important, very important. But tonight is not necessarily the optimal format or forum for you to use to express that support or opposition. Tonight is just step one in the process. So after tonight, the applicant will take the comments received, present a more developed plan for consideration by the Planning Commission at the November meeting. That meeting will be held at 6.30, November the 13th, here at City Hall. When it's presented, the item will be presented in the form of a public hearing. And that's the more appropriate opportunity then for you to share your concerns and your overall support or opposition to the project. So that's the difference between what we have a public meeting and a public hearing. Many of you have already provided uh, our planning staff with public comments and questions. I want you to be assured that every email we receive is forwarded directly to the planning commissioners. And then we maintain that uh, also in our database. So your voice is being heard. If you send an email, they're receiving that email. It's forwarded right to them. So we have a good amount of people here tonight. And uh, so just as soon as uh, the, the presentation is presented to you and questions begin, we're just going to simply ask if you have a question, if you'll raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you so that everybody can hear your question and know what's being said as we go through this. So, concerning the format tonight, does anybody have any questions for me or the planning staff? All right, I'm gonna present Mr. Greg Lasker to you. He is the applicant, He's gonna make a presentation and then we'll get to, to questions and feedback after that. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, Greg Lasker, and I think now um, for again what we see a conceptual development of what we can propose and do. Um, Megan with the uh, Tyler Surveying Group uh, is here representing our interests, as well as uh, my partner Jason Burnett, uh, architect. A developer overall. <laughs> um, I'll turn turn the mic over to them. 
we'll have a conversation. <laughs> no, 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 no pressure. No pressure whatsoever, right? Kind of giving everybody a chance to look at it for a second before I take off. Uh, I do want to say that we're we're excited for the opportunity to get the feedback because we want to do the best that we can with the plan and the development area. Um, this isn't one of those things that's good to just go design a building and throw it out there. It's better to get. I'm looking forward to hearing what everybody has to say. Um, they're making some more copies. Uh, I will tell you a couple of things that we're looking at with the development while they're making copies. Um, the, the idea is what do you do with the land that's on our right? You know, and do you put houses or do you build commercial or what do you do up there? Um, but there's a need in Conway for housing, um, real close to Hendrix. And so we were looking at meeting a need for Hendrix and uh, housing with them, not only for students, but also faculty. Um, we were looking at something that was soft, uh, soft commercial, quiet commercial space, uh, but something that wouldn't be heavy traffic. Um, and we've been looking at the site plan of everything that we can do to uh, control the traffic. And we'll be going over that here in just a minute. But things that we could do to keep it on Hark Ride or not on Hunter or Gist. So, um, the style, we, we want to stay with the historic area, have something that's pretty. Um, something that fits in Conway and looks good and is going to complement Conway's historic area, not just not just another building, whatever. Um, we've got it set up right now where it's one way in on Hunter, one way out on Gist. Um, there was an access, or there is an access currently at the Collins Roofing that ties directly into Park Rider, but um, there's no way to utilize that entrance on and off, not for any volume of cars. Um, Yes, with that, I'd like to hear some feedback that we have on this project because I'd rather do a conversation than just a presentation. So, go ahead. You had mentioned that you had some statistics or whatever that have found for the need for this and I was just wondering can you share what where you found that information okay so we'll right now it's more on a general basis of how much 
city of Conway is doing with growing with the colleges. Um, there's numbers and stuff to support that, but that's important. I want to see it made right down to the show. But but the colleges have continued to that and the student housing. Looking at it and the safety of it and the quality of it isn't always the best. That's a lot of it, yes. Go ahead. Have you uh, talked to Hendrix? No, it's it. Okay. Have you talked to Hendrix about their housing capacity and their housing regulations? We have. Um, they don't. They didn't need. We looked at them as being a direct partner, and they didn't need anything at this time as, as far as a partnership with what they have going. They have different housing that's on site. We're not looking to be Hendrix's exclusive um, uh, extension, but more of a Conway for that. Uh, for that. Right. I'm just aware that, you know, the college has housing capacity that it's, it's unfilled right now, and uh, yes, and it has restrictions on when students can leave. Uh, it, we're we're basically a residential liberal arts college. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, this is more just orientation. Uh, let me introduce myself first. My name is Don Walchuk. I live over in Hendricks Village. But just in terms of orientation of the handout, I'm just trying to confirm, as we're looking at the front, that would be the left side of the page, and that would be facing Harkrider. Is that correct? And then on the right side of the page, in the bottom here, it appears to be the back entrance. Yes. Is, that, is that what we're looking at there? So what we have here on the, the handout, the, the, the top is just a conceptual two-dimensional look at what we have that goes with the floor plan. We did some 3D mock-ups, uh, which this is the front and this is the rear of one stop, and this is the front and this is the rear of another stop. And they were just discussion pieces. We haven't set on it by any measure. Okay. Um, these were just conceptuals to kind of go with the meeting. Just real quick, because I've got to leave. But I was just going to uh, give you a little input. Um, if, if I was you, I don't know that I would target student housing. Um, number one, like this gentleman just said, there's, there's capacity. But I, I'm a landlord, and I get calls every week for rentals. And um, so I would target young professionals or even, you know, like you mentioned, teachers. That'd be good. So I wouldn't scale down to, like, student housing for sure. All right. Um, so, again, there's a lot of demand here in Conway for rentals. Uh, I, I, and I don't have any. Every week I just tell people, no, sorry, sorry, right. good luck. Um, and so the other thing, I don't target students because they're here for a year or two. You know, go for the professionals that are going to be here for three to five years. And so I think that and I think that kind of uh, bodes well for you as investors, and um, and even for the neighbors. You know, we don't have that yearly turnover. Um, you know, we don't want you to roll up a dumpster like they do all over the campus for the kids to throw away all their furniture right. and all that. So just my two cents for right now. I look forward to the next meeting and seeing how this evolves. Thank I appreciate you. the comments. I was just looking at this uh, tentative floor plan that certainly doesn't look like student housing. It, you know, looks like family dwelling. Okay. Well, it's set up currently as each student or young professional would have their own room, but they would have a shared space. It's not set up for a three bedroom. Okay, so, um, well, first of all, my name is Marion Forrest. I live on Hunter Street. Okay. Um, and so my big question, because I noticed you said, and I, I can see where you're, like, trying to curb traffic, 
but you have no northbound access on Harkrider. And so the only access from Harkrider, if you're northbound, is to go through the roundabout and go through Hunter Street. And so what's the, like, to me, infrastructure just does not fit. We actually yesterday walked the street. We have 54 cars at peak evening um, on our on both Hunter, Gist, and the two adjoining uh, roads, Jefferson and Cleveland. And so we're talking about potentially doubling that from a density standpoint. That just doesn't make sense. And, and we don't have the infrastructure because you have no northbound access. So what's your thought process on that? Because you can't get to it. Right. It, it, it stinks when you have to turn around. And, and I know, but we keep driving out to that location. We go and we turn around, either at the gas station or whatever. But it's the place where there's more wrecks. <laughs> than, and that, I mean, like, we're talking huge safety issues. And safety issues on our road, which we've actually, in the past 12 years, had somebody hit on our road. A pedestrian hit. We have no sidewalk access. So, are you guys planning to put in all the sidewalks? Because I know part of the PUD is that it doesn't affect the city. So, what's there are no sidewalks at all on Jim's. Okay. So that it that will be on the PUD to put all of those in. So basically, from the northbound access, you guys don't really have, there, there's no, I mean, it's just going to be people turn around or people go through Hunter. That's, that's what you're looking at. So what do you do with the northbound access? Yeah, so it's still okay. That I mean, that was yes. Oh. Okay. Well, we'll come right back. We'll get, let's get her. My name's Gloria Cheshire, and I live at the village of Hendricks. I feel like I'm coming late to the game. Has there been an actual presentation where you guys have discussed what your plans are beyond the printed material? Just to give us a basis of where you're coming from and what you're thinking and what perhaps you've already discussed with the city staff um, and changes you've already made, you know, a little bit more than this. I got you. Um, so when we went and met with city staff, we looked at what we could do with the property, <coughs> and they expressed concerns of safety, in which we've taken that into account with the site plan. Um, but we're here tonight to hear feedback about what the community's thoughts are. We live on Hunter. We've been there since 63. And when they built the boulevard on Hark Rider, we had to change our way of getting home. We have to go the roundabout on Winfield and then come in on Cleveland 
and this is a family, one family dwelling, and I shudder to think of the traffic that will have to come in and go around in 50 cars. One more question in terms of this handout. Um, if I understood you correctly, you're thinking of, and it was raised as student housing, but perhaps professional housing, whatever, but for each unit, there are potentially three different residents in that in that unit. Yes. So that means there would be six per floor times four floors. Is that correct? Just two floors. Or excuse me, three buildings. Yes. Yes. So, so I, I'm yes. just trying to get okay. So if you do the math, your parking lots already are overflowing, assuming yeah. that one person has a car. Every person has a car. If it's a if it's a family, generally these days there are two two cars per household, sometimes three, but at least two. Right. So again, the math doesn't work for parking. If your thinking is three people per apartment, two apartments per floor, two floors, three buildings. My name is Michael Martinez. Hear me? Yes. I have a business, but I want to ask you, have you walked that neighborhood? Yes. Walk the dog, you see people walking their children, some children playing out there. And I'm like, is our historic district a joke? We can't even, we have to ask somebody to put an extension on, we can't put certain kind of roofs on, and then you can put something up that doesn't match the houses over there. You could easily put, you got three buildings, separate buildings here, but this right. looks like one whole big block of building. So, if you want to return on your investment, I know that guy who's got his house right next to me and rents it out every day. Every week. You make a lot more money renting out by the week than you will trying to do. So, maybe if you had, look at all the Hendrix Village over there and look at the, all the nice little houses that they try to replicate old homes and maybe put those there, and you probably make more money than you're going to do with this. You might even get four of them. So, and I, I'm a business owner, I'm a chiropractor. I can't run a business out of my house. I don't know how you guys can run businesses out of there. And just, you must know somebody on the planning that allows you to do these things. Because we got to jump through hoops to do things. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Slayton Fry. I live on Winfield Street. I'm just curious what your thoughts are around putting a three story building in a residential area that's basically one story buildings. Can you? Can you talk about that? I and mean, obviously, it doesn't really fit the old Conway uh, overlay plan. Okay. So the the three story building is definitely a concern. Um, we're looking at density and what we can do with the property. Um, but on Park Rider, it's not it's not a crazy building on Park Rider. Well, Yes, um, it is being considered both ways. I, mean, I understand, and we've been looking at two-story or three-story, or how do we break up the building? Did you want? I'm against changing it to a PUD altogether. I think R two A is a fine thing. I've seen too many things in Conway start out one way and then when they build it, uh, it, it it's not true you know, what they did. Uh, the, the loss of the trees, loads of trees on that lot, 35 foot tall building blocking my view and uh, no, I, I know you need, you need as investors, you need the, the money, I understand, but you can also build some small houses. You know, maybe one or two of their three lots there without without getting rid of the little college roofing on it. And it would be fitting. Look across the street. Those houses start about 350 grand a piece. I tried to move them. I couldn't afford it. So it's it's you know, we're if this goes through, we're gonna have to move. And I hate it, you know, because I've been there twenty six years this year, and we were so happy to be in that neighborhood. We Unreal, but I'm afraid we're going to lose. 
you know, our picnic is on Sunday. How many neighborhoods, how many people in the neighborhood has a picnic? Who goes Christmas carol? We do that. We have two picnics a year. We carol to neighbors. But, hey, y'all want to put a tattoo parlor, a vape shop there? Come on, bring it on. More questions. I hate to be dominating the conversation. This is, this is all about logistics for me. I've seen and looking at sidewalks, and it was mentioned you've got the gas station down at the corner, and then you've got the next lot from Hunter over to the college. There are no sidewalks on the west side of Parkway. <clears throat> so now if you're going to put in sidewalks, which I commend, yeah. I see the out shoot, shoot of sidewalks in the architect's drawing to a, to a street. Have you looked at how many crosswalks there are across Parkway? Has anybody done the math on that one? Zero. Yeah. So it is an issue. If you're going to put people in there, you're going to have some density. You have to figure out how they're going to traverse. If it's going to be college students, you've got a tight parking lot with full parking lots. They don't have a way to get over to the college because there's no sidewalk on Hark Ride. Yeah, John Courtway, I live on Hunter Street. Mr. Walchuk asked a question earlier. I don't believe you ever responded to it about the parking. It was breaking down the numbers. I'd like to hear your position on that. Um, so y'all were planning for 12 units. Each unit is required to do two and a half spaces per, and it comes out to be 30 spaces for the entire apartment that's required. Um, and then Commercial, it kind of depends on square footage. So we have already planned for 20 additional parking spaces for just the commercial part. Does that help? Yeah, it, it shows 50 spaces. That's it, that's we've got 50 spaces. 30 is for the apartment complex, and then 20 is for commercial. Uh, again, your math. When I was looking at it originally, prior to this session. I was thinking apartment, three-bedroom apartment, mm -hmm. and then I didn't go down the road of the math. But now we're talking about three individuals occupying one unit, two and a half parking places. That does, that math doesn't work. There are three people. The that technical live there. requirement is two and a half. That's per a technical unit. requirement, but it's not a practical requirement. So three bedrooms is what we're presenting. Sometimes you won't always have three different individuals with three cars, but there can be that possibility. Generally, I don't know anybody else here, but in my family and most everybody I know, there are two cars. And out. we do plan for that, for two cars. Two and a half, technically. So we're, we're one. So each building has four units. So each unit has three bedrooms. So each unit, we're planning for two and a half cars per unit. So there's three, three buildings. There's four units in each building. That's 12. 12 times two and a half is 30. <laughs> yeah. So in terms of so that the people that are going to be impacted this can have a realistic vision of what's going on. I raise the issue of sidewalks to that, and I also raise the issues of, as you look at, let's, let's get it down to the world of one, one apartment, and mul the multiplier is whatever it might be. One apartment, one apartment is not, as it was stated earlier today, that I took away was not intended to be for two and a half people. It was intended to be for three people. Right. So we're, we're just saying that we are going by what their requirement is. We do have 20 additional spaces after the requirement. I understand that, Ms. Wanda. I hope you did. 
I do. Yes. And I don't want that. I want the code to stay as is. And you know, this was the code when he bought it. And let him develop on that code. And I think that would be great for our neighborhood because we're historical and he could make the buildings look historical. I know my home was built in 1931, and we've lived there 40 years, and I just really hate to see change go on like that. Are you in the hallway? You are? Okay. I haven't met you before, okay? But I hope you understand what I'm saying with 50 cars coming in my front door every day. You do? All right, so uh, not to offend anybody in the room, but look around the room here. I'm 66. Most of the people in here are at least my age, but you're planning to put a bunch of college students in an apartment complex in a neighborhood where the average age is probably, can I be generous, 50? And how do you think that's, <laughs> how do you think that's going to work out? Now, that was a serious question. How do you think that's going to work out? So, um, everything that we're talking about tonight, we're taking an account. You can't fix every question. You have, to, you have to take it all in. This isn't the presentation. That's He made it clear at the beginning. This is not the presentation. This is the talk. And, and, and I get the point. And, and we want to to address that. And we've thought about just condos. We've thought about tiny homes. We looked at a tiny home village. We've looked at several different things. We're here tonight to, to, to get the feedback. I'm not going to fix it tonight. Okay. But I'd like an answer if you thought about it. Well, we have definitely thought about uh, lower density in the area. But, but we're looking to see what we can do with the property. And it's, and it's, You've got the residence, but you have Conway. You have the college. You, you've got needs that we're trying to meet, not just one person's. Oh, sorry. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Linda Stroom, and I have the property at 1156 Hunter, which is the property directly to the west yes. of the property. And it's in a white cottage. It's a three-story building that's going to be will be greatly in. So, I understand the, the building concept, I understand the direction you're going, because I work at the airport, I don't want to sit in the area. But at the same time, if it does go, my whole thing is going to be, what are you thinking of option that's going to leave my property to your property? So, we've definitely looked at the screening with fence. <laughs> down that area, but also we would be doing uh, tall shrubs, tall trees in between as much as possible. Not some for visual, but also for noise and sound. So, I think lighting would be another safety. concern. Yeah. Safety lighting in the parking lot. <laughs> 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 we got that. The gentleman in the back. So, City of Colleges, we have colleges all around. So Hendricks, 
It doesn't have to be just Hendrix. Okay. Yes. Yes, and and it's really hard to say one thing that doesn't get somebody. You know, it's like, sure. hey, there's people that want to rent, but um, yeah. I think Okay. Yeah, John Courtway again. One of the things I'm trying to get my mind around is this issue of compatibility. You know, it's been a while since I've looked at the uh, PUD requirements, and actually did a little light reading last night. And there's this idea of it, PUD offers an <coughs> opportunity, magic words, or an appropriate level of compatibility with surrounding development. I have a bunch of cars, and all my neighbors know he's got a ton of cars at his house, and I'm always down at Austin. All right, so I was the other day. I was like, "Well, I'm just gonna walk back." So I started walking down Park Rider. I come to IHOP, one-story building. I come to Southern Pike, one-story building. Let's see, I come to Big Old Tire, one-story building. I come to the little strip mall. Mr. Hatfield used to have that property, one-story. Uh, come to you know, there's a new little strip mall there with a bait shop, one-story. Come to Hortons, that gas station has been there since Henry Ford built the automobile. Uh, then I get into the cellular place, and I get into Miss uh, Miss Lambert's antique, one story. Uh, there's an all-state business, one story. There's a tax service that's about one and a half. I've never been in that house. Then Collins Roofing, which I understand is going to be demolished, but that's a one-story building. You jump the parcel in question, you come to Miss Fulmer's house that she's on. I don't see how this three-story building is compatible with that side of Hark Rider. So I'd love to hear your view on that. So back to density and what we use with the property, <coughs> we're seeing what we can do. And across the street, we have two stories, three stories all across the street. I've, I've, that has become very loud tonight. I got that. You know, and it's and it's a good thing to have the the back and forth so that we can hear this because we we've, we've looked at things that were just a two story and it was more of a condo style. Well, this isn't the presentation. Yeah. So, how upset would you be have been if I brought a two story to the night and I brought a three story to the other meeting? You know. So I'd rather show you what we're doing what we're talking about, and then have good information to adjust to that. So, oh, sorry. Hi, uh, Christopher Crook. I also live in the village. Uh, so, um, well, um, Winfield. Um, my main concern, uh, and what I brought statistics for, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I had to write up, but I was like, okay, this is going to be a long time. Um, but uh, uh, on any given year, Conway has a higher than average rate of unoccupancy. Right now, there are 2,481 housing units. Um, so about 9% of all housing units, and only 44% of them are lived in by the owner. So the majority of Conway does typically rent. Um, right now, there's 389 homes for sale in Conway and 102 properties available for rent. Right now, we are in an off-peak season because we're in the middle of the summer. Um, however, Ever since last year, because you know there is ebb and flow to the you know, to the um, the price per rental, but it has gone down a hundred dollars since year, since last year on average. Um, when it comes to homes, though, only one percent of homes in Conway were built in the last ten years. So, probably a market still for single family homes. Um, when it comes to the space that this uh, project is going to go on. There's an apartment complex within iShot. There's a townhome for rent in like two streets over, and there's 4,500 square feet of uh, rental space across the street. It's been on the market and vacant since February. Um, so, yeah, that's what I got. Just concerns about, and also the unoccupancy rate in that whole area, which includes the historic district, is actually 3% higher than the regular. Area, 
don't see the need for, for it, but you know, have the statistics. I'm glad to hear it. I just well, let me answer because y'all are also trying to see the vision. So we the property's been there for a long time, and Mr. Lasker's worked on it for for years, trying to get the property had had seen and. And I've met with several customers who were very intrigued with the property and would love to have townhomes there. And we know that that there's a need for that. And we've seen it. Um, on an investment side, it would be better to have more density. But we know that townhomes are a, a draw. Something there is going to go, and especially if we build it attractive, it's going to go, it's going to rent. So I, I hear you that everything is down on numbers and all that stuff, but people are being born every day. We live longer and longer. You know, it's, I got you. But. You, you keep comparing us to the Lindbergh Village up in Columbus. But you realize that the village is down the hill and this is on the top of the hill. It can be a huge monolith block. So uh, I have two, kind of two questions. One, like I understand like you're looking at density, but the comprehensive plan of Conway is that it's single family homes. It's most of it is set for single family homes. So kind of what drove you to change that thought process? That's one question I kind of want to hear, like what, what changed that? Because I definitely can see a need for single family homes within the city of Conway. And then secondly, I mean, affordable, affordable <laughs> single family homes that are well done, which that I know you do well. Um, so, but the second, like you were talking about it across the street. So this historic addition was built long before Hendricks Village was ever, and Hendricks Village was specifically, I mean, from the roadways. So like, I'm hearing you want to make it so that it comes in from Hark Rider and goes out, but I'm missing from what I'm reading of PUDs really outside of we're going to have a one way in and out. That's all there really is when it's talking about your, your internal streets network. So I feel like that's a huge part that we're still missing is you have an established, actually one of the oldest neighborhoods in Conway that you're trying to increase the density by really double. But we're not, we're missing where the safety and the how the density fits within the comprehensive plan and within just safety in the neighborhood. So I'm kind of like, I'm wanting to hear more from you guys on like what you were thinking on that because it, it doesn't fit with with even what Conway has put out as a comprehensive plan. Maybe there's not an answer. <laughs> I don't know that there's an answer right now. I, I, I'm going to throw this out. I appreciate hearing what we're saying. I don't like the idea of a three-story building. You don't like the idea of the traffic. You don't like the idea of it not being a historic-looking building. Hear those things. We want to take those in account before our presentation. Is there other things, you know, that you had concerns about? Because we've got, that, that's what I'm trying to do is get to the point of I'm hearing the concerns so that we can alter. And, and I can throw out one more. I'll throw out one more. Okay. I think, I think Austin Hall and
but especially if you're trying to do a multi-family business, like, okay, let's talk about that over, over office and that. It just, it creates more and more density, which doesn't, is not fitting. Yes, I'm John Pickett. I live in the village. You ask what your company needs to do. One, we've got some si a strip of sidewalk down here. The sidewalk is the second is parking. We have to be built. We want to build it. So About, you said nothing about the parking That's if the flow of the traffic out of this building is going to funnel through the residential area because it's going to be difficult to get an car ride. You can get on on hard ride or be a The rest of it will get. Now, that's three topics that you need to address. There's another topic about whether <coughs> it fits in this neighborhood. You have everyone here has spoken that it doesn't fit. I don't know what you do. I, under, I fully understand that you're trying to get the maximum units, get the highest return on the property owner. But maybe you ought to just put it in the fourth street, sell it to somebody else. Okay. <laughs> One more question in terms of as you're looking at this and developing this. And I've got a lovely little drawing here. I see and having living over on the other side uh, in the village. With the impacts of the business there, uh, garbage is a problem. Where you put your garbage cans, uh, where the dumpsters, where the trucks come through, because your parking lot looks to be pretty slim. We've got issues, and I work with the city in trying to better utilize the space that had planned alleys. So uh, take into consideration, if you would, where the dumpsters are going, where the dump trucks are going. Uh, I'm sure you've looked at emergency vehicles, but uh, uh, there's nothing on here that shows a place for a dumpster. And if you're going to put dumpsters in, you're taking away parking lots, parking spots. Great point. Thank you. I'm just going to make a rebuttal about the, the uh, your comment about the population growing and everything like that. That is true. Actually, our realtor like told us, you know, Conway's booming and everything when we moved here. However, if you look at the statistics, it grows at a very steady rate of about 1,000 people a year. And the majority of them are buying homes. Over 1,300 homes were sold in Conway in the last 12 months. And most of them are on the west side of town. Yeah. Yeah, so... Yes, it's growing, but like, I mean, <coughs> my fear is that you're going to have a lot of unoccupied space. I just want to say also, like, I, I understand it probably feels like you're getting ganged up on here, so I appreciate <laughs> you listening to all of us, and I hope that this, like, kind of helps you maybe restructure some things. Yes. Um, but my, like, obviously I'm new to the area, um, but I do live in the village, and for me, one thing that drew me to it was the way that the house looked and the character that it had and all of the character, all the other homes in the area. Um, and it was an affordable house, so it was like the best of everything, best of all the world, right? But the, the thing that concerns me as well is the value of my home. Am I still retaining that value? And when you put something like this up, if it does have vacancies, which I do foresee, that happening, especially in the retail space as well. Um, 
that is going to draw down the values of our homes, which are already somewhat lower in this particular area. But if you look across the street, um, behind those taller buildings, all those newer homes that were built back there, they've kind of taken on that same you know, look of being a little older. Those houses are going for much higher and they're newer, you know, so that only will bring up the value of our homes too. So if you changed it from something like, you know, kind of right. giving it that look and then being homes, it's going to, you're going to get your return on it. I do believe that. And we're going to get a return on the value of our homes too, because it's not real retail space and it's not vacant rental space. Great point. We got about 10 minutes left. <laughs> Yeah, way. Again, I hate to keep beating this compatibility thing, but you know, a walk back from Austin Brothers doesn't fit yes. on that side. You compared it, you're looking across to the Hendrick Village, is what, yes. what you're doing. All right. So, you know, the people in the village, they move there knowing a mixed use, three story, maybe even four. I don't know how big some of those buildings are, but they move to that. This is an instance of three story, multi use buildings coming into our parking into our neighborhood. Now, there, there is an apartment building just down the hill that's, in, that's a part of the village, but it fits in the village concept, and it doesn't have any commercial. It's a two-story residential kind of row house. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm not even sure that's even a, com a comparable uh, structure, but I guess one of the things that bothers me is the commercial aspect of the building, when I got, some of us got a letter from the Tyler group that, you know, when you looked at it, it had tacos stenciled on a window. Nobody yes. loves a taco more than I do. Yeah. But I'm not sure taco I want to. Yeah. I, I want to go across the street to the village to go to Zaza. I don't want to go in my na own neighborhood. Yes. I got you. Yes, I'm sorry, but I have a laundry list full of questions that I've hoped that would be answered. Uh, through the process, but I want to start with the necessity for the rezoning. And I presume that you looked heavily into the using the current zoning and redeveloping duplexes that are allowed. And the duplexes, if I understand the zoning correctly, can have 100 feet of width. I mean, the basically, so you could put a, three duplexes in this property, is that correct? Yes. Okay. You did look into that? Okay, what is correct, please? Excuse me, are there not three lots there? The way it is currently platted? Okay. Okay, but but the plat that's being considered is three properties, right? One is zoned the low office impact currently. Okay. And I'm sorry I'm not familiar enough with Conway zoning to know whether or not you would have to rezone the O2 to to R3 to be able to uh, put it into residential use. I don't know that. It would also have to be rezoned to go back to a residential uses. Okay. Okay, so pretty much right now, you could do something with the current building that's there in the way of an office or commercial space. You could, you could redevelop that property because you're talking about tearing it down anyway. So you can redevelop it. You can put in two, which would turn out to be four residential units. Correct? Under two duplexes, so four units, two, two, two du duplexes, correct? And you guys have all looked at that already and decided that that was not an appropriate use. We've looked at. Okay. Okay, let, let me go on. Um, I want to talk about the ownership of this property. If I understand right under the PUD, 
the ownership can be a sole ownership or it can be, um, like in the case of a condo, a POA. What is proposed once you have developed the property for the ownership? I'm asking about the ownership of the property once you have developed it. So we're talking down the road, you finish the project, it's built. Now then, who's going to own it? Is it going to be owned by a single owner? And, or is it going to be owned by individuals? Well, Okay, so So how many units do we end up with? <laughs> yes, the roofing company. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I was in. I apologize. I can't listen on two sides of the Um anyway, she what she answered me was that pretty much with the houses that were there, you could replace each house with a duplex. Okay, so you would end up with four residential units. But that's a possibility. They keep talking about tearing down columns. No, this is without columns. That's what she showed me. There's not enough room. There's only 150 feet. Okay. At, at some point, at some point for the neighborhood, can you answer that question of if you, under the current Zoning, how could you develop this property? Okay. And and then if you would clarify the ownership as to once it is built, how it will be owned, whether it will be sole proprietorship or you know an individual, uh, or whether or not it will be um, a, a POA situation. It's currently owned by an LLC. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I apologize. I didn't hear your question. I was doing that thing over here, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. He answered the question on the sole proprietorship. For, for okay. the proprietorship, it would be owned by one entity and not be a POA. Um, the site plan, um, what we've been given doesn't show existing easements or right-of-ways. Is there a right-of-way that allows Hark Rider to be widened at some point or the potential? I'm pretty sure Hark Rider took that additional right-of-way when it was approved. Okay, so there's there's no additional there's no additional right-of-way. Okay, I noticed in this site plan that you've gone down to 25 feet to the front where there was originally a 35 foot green space on the plant site plans that were sent out previously. I don't think I saw that one. It was but what, I didn't create the first one, so. Yeah, it was what was attached to the email that was the public notice for this meeting. That site plan, I believe. The original site it. plan said that it was 35 foot setback and the new site plan shows 25. Okay, so it still is a 35 foot. What is considered green space in that? It, it's a 25. It's, it's 25 on the current one that you've got. 
Okay, and that would be considered the green space for the PUD. Typical green space, I think, is about 15 feet. For, are you talking about, are, you're talking about what we're dedicating as green space? That's correct. Sorry. That would be public space. Yeah, it would be whatever's in the building line. I'm not understanding you. The 25 feet, what would be in the building line? Would be okay. green space. Would be the green space, and that would be considered public property. Is that correct? It won't be dedicated for it. We're just reserving it as green space. Okay. It won't be something that the public would have to maintain. Will there be any other green space on this property beyond the 25 feet to the front that goes from street to street? That's a question for you. I would say landscaping is going to definitely be there as well as, you know, islands. Have you calculated the percentage of green space to, to the <laughs> building space? That one's actually going to have to be addressed in the site development review. It, it is a requirement that we provide a certain amount of green space. Right. Yeah. And are you providing the sidewalks and connectivity that makes it truly a public space? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What does it connect to? So right now, sidewalks on the front, I don't know about that one, but it should connect from street to street. We'll have to have sidewalks in front of all the buildings and throughout the parking. And then along Hunter as well as Jit. It's okay, another requirement. Be, in essence, then, will there be two sidewalks, a sidewalk that runs parallel to Hark Rider, much similar to what it is now, Pretty and similar. then a sidewalk in front of the buildings? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we're talking more materials. Okay. I, I have a concern because I live on the canal that leads into the, the space for um, the village. Okay, this in between uh, the alleyway Burrow and Swin building. Okay, that takes all the runoff coming from this area. Have you done any kind of calculations that talks about the impervious materials that are going to be used on this space? That's another side development review. This one is purely just trying to get a plan together for what we can use the space for. Okay. Do you, do you happen to know whether or not uh, that runoff from that property will come into the Hendricks Village drainage? Unfortunately, those numbers haven't been run because we're still trying to see if we can utilize it. We'll have to topo the property and plan for any runoff. And, and if it's required, it's something that we'll have to catch water and slowly drain it out. Yeah. During sub-development, site development review. Thank you, Ryan. And, and, okay, yes, and, and could they consider using uh, materials that will not be concrete, I guess is the way to put that question. Like a natural rock bed flow kind of thing? One so of those we like don't have quite so much ponds. concrete that <laughs> produces a whole lot of runoff. Yeah, because it's all downhill from there. <laughs> Got it. We are at the highest point, apparently. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, That's really yeah. Yeah. And, Unique to the village that they have the preserve, which was developed by the Army Corps of Engineers, and there's plans and runoff and all those kinds of things. I think it's very important whomever is going to be doing that work uh, be totally understanding of what the requirements are for runoff into that drainage area, because it is part of the preserve that was established when uh, the Conway uh, develop, or the college developed and then Conway took over the parts that they have involving that. So take a good look at that because there will be issues. Okay. Um, we are wrapping up the question uh, period. I know that they'll stick around for just a minute or two if you have something personally, another question that you'd like to ask them or if you have a process question for planning or whatever. But we are... Uh, just past our time tonight. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that it's been beneficial to you. I know it's been beneficial to this group here, beneficial to planning for us to hear your feedback and everything as well. Uh, as of now, this meeting is concluded. If you have any... Uh, November the 13th Planning Commission. Sure. Absolutely. No, of course not. We staff will uh, 
the applicant will take the feedback, they'll go, they'll revise the plans, they'll make the changes that they want to make, they'll submit it to staff. Staff will perform our review and we will prepare our staff report to the Planning Commission that's typically published on the Wednesday or the Thursday preceding the meeting, so whatever the date would be prior to that. We publish it on our website. We have a meeting information section. It'll be, it'll be published there, but by all means, um, you're more than welcome to call our staff and as soon as it's ready, we can send you a digital link, we can print you a copy, whatever you would like, but it is there, it's posted publicly. No, you're fine, I'm just letting you know. We're happy to do that, just ask. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. So conwayarkansas.gov and there's meeting, meeting information and you'll select planning commission and then you'll just go to the appropriate month and it's posted there for you. All right, great. Thank you all. Good night.